Well hello there, uh, I've been making uh, bone stock for a little while and there's been recently quite a bit in the uh, in the news about the health benefits of it. I can't really vouch for those benefits at all um, but I just thought if anybody was interested in experimenting with it I'd let people know uh, exactly how I, how I make it because there does seem to be a bit of confusion over it even though it's actually very very simple. Um, the most important ingredient of course are the, um, are the bones here on your left. Uh, two OXO cubes in there at the moment. Uh, there's two carrots chopped up, a whole onion chopped up, three or four sticks of uh, celery chopped up, uh, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, um, a good pinch of, uh, of mixed herbs and then uh, a good probably about half a teaspoon full of uh, black pepper. I don't add any additional salt or anything because there's plenty of salt in the um, in the OXO cubes. They're far and away the most uh, important ingredient of, uh, of this sort of beef tea or bone stock whatever you want to call it are these and these are the, uh, the beef marrow bones I get from the, from the butchers. Uh, most butchers are pleased to get rid of them they tend to get just thrown away um, and once they've been cooked uh, I do the whole thing in a pressure cooker. Um, the residual uh, what's left of the bones uh, then can be either given to your to your dog or neighbour's drug dog in my case. But you see in the in the middle here we've got all this lovely um, lovely bone marrow that all comes out and really makes a uh, I'm sure a very nutritious and, um, and and certainly very tasty drink. So you can make um, bone stock in pretty much any pretty much any way but I find definitely the best way to do it is using this device which I find absolutely fantastic and this is my um, large capacity pressure cooker it's made by a company called Kuhn Recon um, it's just just on there it's a duramatic model uh, by Kuhn Recon it's a Swiss company it's brilliantly made um, very very safe about three levels of safety feature on it um, so that's uh, what I use to uh, to make all my stock and various other soups and things. A brilliant piece of kit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a, a litre of cold water into the uh, into the pressure cooker. Get the get the gas onto that. And that can just be uh, heating up. So um, what I what I do then is just boil up the boil up the kettle to make up the to make up the other uh, the other liter. I put a, a, a total of uh, two liters of um, liquid in here. Um, so it's all pretty pretty straightforward. So we've got a, a liter of uh, liquid in there so now we're just popping the popping the bones in and go in there and well, that's all heating up and then it's really incredibly simple so I've got the bones in and then it's just a, a matter of popping in the the rest of the stuff and then go the in go the carrots in goes the celery And the onions. Perfect. And then the other ingredients. Pop in the, the herbs. Sprinkle over the black pepper. It gives it a nice sort of sharp flavour. So the balsamic vinegar is um, very very important because it uh, gives it a certain level of uh, acidity which helps according to what I've read anyway uh, apart from giving it a nice flavour it um, helps leach the um, sort of minerals and things out of the bones as they're, as they're being cooked so that's a, a very important thing to have in there. So that's how it's all looking now so we've just got another uh, litre of the um, uh, oxo to put in so that's two oxo cubes uh, with a litre of water that will go in on top of all that. Okay so it's starting to warm up now so I'm just I've got this uh, litre of um, 
OXO. So that's all going in. So by the time the pressure cooker has cooked for um, about an hour and 20 minutes the total volume would have gone down from about 2 litres uh, to about 1.6 litres, something like that. And I'll just give that a little, little stir around to get everything well mixed up. And that really is it. It's just then a matter of sealing up the pressure cooker and waiting for that to waiting for that to come up to pressure. Okay, we'll get that uh, we'll get that sealed up. And here we go with the lid. Press that on and lock it into place. That's it. That's absolutely brilliant. That's all ready to go now. So now we just leave that and wait for this little um, this little nozzle to come up. And just a little close-up view of the um, pressure release valve here. So as the temperature inside goes up and the pressure builds up, you see that little red line appearing at the bottom there, then there's another one. So between those is the correct pressure, so we wait for the, the steam to um, and pressure to build up inside and when it's there we just turn the heat right down, it'll just simmer away for about an hour and 20 minutes. So it's just a matter of keeping an eye on that now. Now the beauty of um, pressure cooking as far as I'm concerned is that um, well it's very very energy efficient apart from anything else um, but it allows you to cook things like stock, bones, all this soups, all this sort of thing in a fraction of the time so the, about um, an hour and 20 minutes of cooking time in here would take you hours and hours and hours to achieve um, w without using a pressure cooker so I think they're just absolutely uh, invaluable things for this sort of thing so I tend to make stock every um, every three or four days, something like that. You can see now the um, pressure cooker has been on for about five or ten minutes or so. You can just see that this thing is starting to starting to rise up. There's a bit of a bit of a gap there now and it's just starting to hiss. You can probably just about hear that. So it won't be very long before that's uh, up to its temperature and I can turn the gas right down. And you can see now that the um, the first red line has appeared. That indicates that the pressure cooker is now virtually up to its um, cooking temperature. You can just see it pop up a little bit there as the pressure keeps increasing. Um, so I would now start to time the cooking time. Um, say I'll, I'm going to cook this for about uh, about an hour and uh, 20 minutes. Um, but once now that it's up to pressure, I can uh, once the second red line appears. Uh, I'll turn the uh, turn the gas right down. Now you can see now that the second red line has appeared in the uh, pressure valve there. So that's time to just hear the steam starting to come off. So I'm now going to turn the gas right down to the lowest setting and that will just um, hiss gently away like that. <coughs> Excuse me, for, uh, throughout the cooking time. That'll be absolutely perfect. So. Um, about an hour and 20 minutes from now and what we do then is let the pressure um, re re release slowly and then it's time to open up the pot and uh, see what we've got. Okay so that's now been cooking for uh, about an hour and 20 minutes and let the pressure go off. You see that thing's now dropped down so we can now open the pressure cooker up and everything will be nicely cooked inside. And there we are, that looks superb to me. See what we've got now is the all the meats just come off the off the bone, so that will go into it. This will all be thrown away, this fat here. And in here, you see we've got lovely cooked bone marrow in there, so that's going to be that's all coming out, that'll be delicious. The vegetables will all um, be strained off and they'll be added to uh, put through a liquidizer and add it to soup but now I'm going to just fish these bones out and put them onto a plate. So here we are, that's the bones all uh, out of the pressure cooker. So this is all cooked bone marrow, very very rich, high in protein, also fat as you can see. 
people used to put that on toast at one time. I just eat a little bit of it with a touch of salt, that's really nice. Bits of meat there that the next door's dog will enjoy. See a lot of the cartilage has been uh, rendered down and comes off the bone so I'm hoping that a lot of the constituents of the cartilage will have got into the stock um, which is one of the reasons why it's supposed to be so good for you. And this three bits of meat here are absolutely delicious, really nice. Okay so we'd have a, a quick look at the uh, product of all this. Uh, that's the plate of residual bones for uh, next door neighbour's dog. Uh, which you'll thoroughly enjoy, I'm sure. And the next thing is this little um, bowl of so these are the carrots, uh, the celery um, and the onion. And um, what will happen to those now is they'll uh, they'll get put into the liquidizer and blended together and added to other soups, so there's no waste there at all. So the last thing we've got is this saucepan of absolutely beautiful uh, beef bone stock or beef tea, whatever you want to call it. Um, what will happen, you see the, the fat in it will rise to the top and that will just, as it cools down, that will become solid and so that will just be lifted off and thrown away so that's not a problem. And then you're just left with the, the sort of beef tea or beef stock itself which is a, a lovely drink. And say so there's been a lot of um, health reports about the health properties of it for all sorts of things from a healthy skin to reducing your wrinkles. I've got no idea whether any of that works but um, I've every reason to believe it's a, a very um, healthy food and um, we, we're certainly, we certainly thoroughly enjoy it and we're going to keep having it. So the next clip that I'll produce will be uh, probably in the morning uh, when I just come to take the fat off that and and that will close the story, um, but I'm um, going to pop it into the garage for now. So here we are after the uh, stock has cooled down. And so this has been it's left to cool then popped into the fridge. As you can see the, uh, the fat, or it's now tallow, which is uh, rendered beef, it's now pretty solid. And that's all now just got to be just lifted off. Uh, then what I can do is uh, melt that down. You don't need to waste it if you don't want to. You can melt it down, superb for cooking roast potatoes or frying, it's very high smoking temperature fat. Um, entirely up to you, certainly a lot healthier than the um, sort of hydrogenated oils and things you get in supermarkets. So we'll get a saucepan and then set about uh, just getting that, uh, getting that fat off the stock. Okay, well this can be a bit of a Bit of a messy job. I'm just going to put stuff into this uh, into this saucepan, but you just have to make the best of it you can, really. So I'm just loosening it around the edges. Right, that's broken into a big piece, so that's okay. Right. So the bigger the bits you can get out, the better, really. See, that's about well five millimeters thick breaks up into there. So this is all tallow, this is herbs floating on the top. As I say it's brilliant for, for frying stuff. What I'll do is I'll melt that down into a liquid then just pour it into a pot. And, uh, and there we have it. There's our beautiful bone stock or beef tea whatever you want to call it that'll last a few days before we, um, before we make some more but that's uh, absolutely perfect. I hope that's been of some interest that's a quicker way of making bone stock than, um, uh, than boiling for hours and hours uh, I find the pressure cooker excellent so thanks very much indeed.